Statistics, coin flip example, calculating expected value when we have both even and then uneven odds as well as a fair versus an unfair coin. Get ready and some coffee because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're currently in the first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. One note presentation section 1810, coin flip, expected value, even and uneven odds and coin tab. Looking at the concepts of probability, basically considering probability as a subsection of the broader topic of statistics, First, looking at the coin flip, which is always a great place to start because when we flip one coin, we only have the two possible outcomes of heads or tails, as opposed to other games, which we might look at in future presentations, like flipping a dice, where you have one out of six options, or card games, where you have 52 cards in the deck, and so on and so forth. We're gonna be adding another component as we calculate the expected value than we might have seen in prior presentations or courses, not only calculating the odds of the coin flip, if it's an even coin, 50-50 for example, but also considering the payout, looking at this as though it's like a carnival or casino game, noting Many people enjoy looking at things as though uh, they are a carnival or a casino game, but some people do not because they don't like the idea of gambling. But these games correlate very closely to some other activities such as investing and use the same kind of concepts. And these games have been built directly on top of the core concepts of probability. Therefore, it's basically probability distilled down to its essence and are great tools for us to understand the concepts of probability, which we can then apply to many other areas within statistics or finance and so on and so forth. So that's gonna be the general idea. So we're, we're thinking about this concept of the expected value with the coin flip. So we have our coin here, the good old quarter this time. Now, if you were to put this in, into something like Excel, which we might do in a future course or section, so you can take a look at that, but this will be a little bit more streamlined because we're gonna be covering the concepts here, touching on what you might do and how you might build this in a, a spreadsheet program like Excel. So we're gonna say we have heads and tails. If we flip the co coin multiple times, uh, we can only get per flip either one or the other a heads or a tails. Now, oftentimes, if you're gonna use something like Excel, you might then say, I'm gonna give them the value of a one and a two, for example, because that might make it easier for me to simulate the coin flips, which we will discuss how you might start to do uh, in a second here. So the other thing we need to consider here is the payout. So when we think about a game, I'm gonna flip a coin, what are the payouts going to be? So we can of course start with the standard payout one to one, and then we'll adjust it. And we'll also then think about what would happen if the coin was not even, it doesn't have a 50-50 heads and tails. What does that do to our expected value calculations? 
So first we consider the payout of one to one. If it was a casino game and they were flipping a coin in front of you, you can imagine that you put your dollar down or your chip representing a dollar. And of course, if you pick heads and it lands on heads, then they're going to put a dollar on top of your dollar. You take back the two dollars, one dollar profit. The, the first would be your investment. If it comes out tails and you bet on heads, and it was paying out one to one, then they take your dollar, of course. So you either win a dollar or you lose a dollar. And then you can also write it this way, of course, the win of a dollar, the loss of a dollar. So you often see it written this way. You could write it, of course, this way as well. All right, so then we're gonna be con considering uh, the odds. So we have the win, the loss, and the total. So to win, what are the odds of winning? Well, if you flip a coin, let's imagine you choose heads. Uh, so we'll just pick one to get the answer. You could choose either one, but we're going to pick one because that'll, that'll set our point in motion. So we can, we can look at it from that angle. Then we have one out of the total number of two chances in order to get the heads, which of course is going to be one half or 50%. Now note that if you're talking about a coin or a dice, or a deck of cards and it's even the odds are even the cards are evenly shuffled it's a random pick the coin is an even coin it's a random flip the dice is a fair dice it's a completely random if every number has the same odds of showing up then the way we can calculate the odds is we can say well what number are we looking for what's the event we want in this case heads out of the total number of events that are possible, there are only two events possible. If it was a dice and we pick like a four, then we'd have one out of six events possible. If it was a dice and we picked even numbers, then we would have like three chances out of the six possible, right? Now, if the coin, as we will see later, is not even, it lands on heads a lot more than tails, then we can't just do that because now that now the coin how would we how would we figure out what the odds are well all you can do is flip the coin a bunch of times and see what's the likelihood or how often does it land heads versus tails because it's not evenly likely to land on heads and tails all right all right so we're starting off with the even one so what are the odds that you lose well it's out of two so if we have one out of two one way you can calculate that is to say two minus the one event that would win would give me one out of two events of tails that it would lose. And if you add those up, when we add up fractions, we add up the top numbers, one plus one is two, and the denominator stays the same is two. And so we have two over two, which is one. One is basically 100%. If we see this in percentage formats, we could say one divided by two is obviously 0.5, right? If we put out the trusty calculator, one divided by two, uh, hold on a sec, one divided by two is going to be 0.5. And then if I say times 100, then you get the 50%. So we have the 50, 50 and same with the losses. One divided by two is 50% and two divided by two is 100 or 50% plus 50% is 100. I know it's a basic table, but it's useful to, to look at the structure of the table and of course the different components, which still can be a little confusing even though it's a simple component because we're looking at fractions, we're considering decimals, and we're considering it, it in percentage formats. We wanna be able to see and recognize this in all formats and see how the table can basically work out as well. All right, and then of course, this is just calculating it again. All right. And so then we have the expected value uh, uh, or return. So now we've calculated uh, the odds. So let's think about if we win, what happens when we win? We put down a dollar betting on heads. Heads comes up. They put another dollar on top of our, our, of our dollar. And uh, we expect that to happen on odds as we calculated up here 50% of the time. So therefore that if we multiply those together, the $1 times 50%, we get 0.5. And on the losses, we bet on heads, it comes out tails. What happens? They take our dollar, we lose a dollar. That's gonna happen about 50% of the time. So we're gonna take the, the, the loss times 50% and that's gonna be giving us 0.5 negative. Uh, so so it's a, uh, we're losing the 50 and if i add those up then 
we're going to get to, obviously, this 50 plus 50 is 100%. That has to be the case. If it's not 100%, we're missing something. That's our double check, kind of like the double entry accounting system in, uh, in uh, accounting. So the expected value is, of course, zero. And this is what we would call a fair game. So note, if we're talking about a fair game, it's not fair because you're paying one to one. That doesn't make it fair. The fair is the expected value is, is zero. Now, the expected value will never be zero for each flip. That's impossible because when you flip, you're either going to win a dollar or lose a dollar. So the expected value is actually something that is impossible to actually occur in any one individual flip. But if we did this many times, then we would expect the average outcome to be about zero in an even game. Uh, and that's going to be the that's going to be the general idea. Also, remember that we have to know the context to think about whether an even game is appropriate or not. Meaning if I'm in a casino, you're not going to get an even game. Why? Because you have to pay the casino somehow. So how do you pay the casino? How does the casino pay for the service of the games that they're providing? Either you're betting against other people, like in a horse race or in a game of cards where you're, where you're playing poker. The, in that case, whoever wins the pot, the casino is going to take a piece of it. And they're just, you're just paying them a percentage of the pot for the service of providing the game and putting the rules together or whatever. If you're thinking about you're paying against the casino, like blackjack or the game of 21, right? Or like, or like roulette or like craps, then you're not actually paying the pot. You're betting against the casino. That means the odds are going to be against you. So that means the longer you play, the more likely you're going to lose in a casino. That's the expected, what you would expect to be the case because the casino's got to pay for the casino, right? Now, if you're in an investment situation, then you would expect the expected value to be positive. So that's what you're looking for. If I'm investing in stocks and bonds, I'm expecting to win. I'm expecting it to go up. And that's normal in investing in stocks and bonds and note, in that scenario, you're not taking advantage of the market because you're winning. You're actually doing good for everyone in my theory of economics here, right? Because, because if you wisely invest in things, companies, stocks that grow, then what you're doing is you're not taking money from other people. You're growing the economy. You're increasing the economy's value. So the better you are at picking stocks and getting rich doing it, if you could do that, in my looking at the world, you're actually doing good because you're putting your money in companies that are growing the pie so people have more stuff to consume. Now, if you're playing against somebody else, like a friend, then of course you want to set up a game that's basically fair because you want to do it for playing the game. You're not trying to scam your friend out of the money. You're playing a fair game uh, and, and, pra and playing just for the, for the essence of the game. So you would expect that to be fair. All right, keeping those in mind, we're usually considering casino games here, which of course we expect to be unfair. Right? All right, so what's going to be, let's think about a payout matrix. What if the payout matrix was two to one? And, and by the way, if we had one to one payout matrix, you could bet $10. What if you bet $10, then of course, if you win, they would give you uh, $10, right? And then you put $10 down, they give you the $10 if you win. And if you lose, they take your $10, right? Be, it'd be the same uh, in that format. So then what if the payout was two to one? Meaning uh, if you win, they're going to give you, they're going to give you, if you put down a dollar and you win, you put your dollar on the table, they put $2 on top of it and you take the $3 back, $2 are winning. And if you lose, then it's only that $1 that you put down. So you only lose the $1, which you can represent winning $1. If you lose, uh, uh, I'm sorry, winning, I should have $2 here. I'm sorry, should, this should be a two. But in any case, two to one this way, that number's wrong. Let me put a little cross out of it. Duh. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. So then what's going to happen if we do that? What are, what are the odds going to be? Well, the odds, notice the odds haven't changed here. We're still going to say, well, if they win, it's one half, one half. I'm going to choose heads. If I choose heads or tails or whatever, but we'll pick heads, 
then it's a one half, one half. The odds are 50-50 that it's going to be turning out uh, heads versus tails, just like before. But the expected value is going to differ because if I win, then I'm going to get $2 uh, at 50% likelihood, which comes out to one. And if I lose, I'm only going to lose $1, which is going to happen at a 50% likelihood. Therefore, that comes out to 0.5. So the expected value then is going to be uh, the 1 plus the 0. 0.5, which is a 0. 0.5. So we would have a positive uh, expected value in that case. Again, we're not going to win uh, 0. 0.5. We're either going to win $2 or we're going to lose $1 per bet. But if we did it a bunch of times, you would expect that we would gravitate towards that 0. 0.5. Now, obviously, if you think about this from the standpoint of say a casino they they would never have a you know an expected value positive on your side it's always going to be negative and their concept is is, is going to be you can win in the short run but if we have a bunch of people playing this game in the long run they can be pretty sure confident that they're going to win a set amount of money over the extended game in the long run because that's how the the odds work out in the long run let's do another one let's say the payout and by the way, you can kind of extend this to the concept of that Pascal's wager, which was the first concept that we looked at in a prior presentation that kind of started out this idea of creating a bet where he was saying, you know, you, betting on whether or not God exists or not was, was, the, was the idea here that, well, even if it's a 50-50 chance, obviously, if, this, if, if the payout goes way up, uh, versus what you, what you what you get if you lose, then it's going to be a very favorable game. Is the is the idea? So if you get if you got an infinite payout, it's not even one of the differences between gambling and investing is simply that it's the it's the odds. Are you investing in something that has a favorable likelihood of a payout, or investing, or are you not? Are you playing a game? which you might win in the short run, but in the long run, you're going to uh, lose according to the statistics, right? So if this, if this payout was sufficiently high, even if the likelihood of me winning is low, it would still be a favorable game, right? There's two con things that we need to consider, both the odds as well as the, as the payout. Well, let's look at what if what if the payout is back to one to one so we have one to one payout again that doesn't mean it's an even game necessarily because the the odds might not be 50 50. so let's say let's say now that the odds are not uh 50 50. let's say let's say to win uh it's a two-thirds odd now if you're talking about a a coin then remember how we calculate the odds if they were all likely evenly likely to come up heads or tails it would be the heads divided by the total tails one half but the coin might not be even meaning one comes up more than the other well that means that how would we know that we can't just we can't just say one out of the total we would have to flip the coin a whole bunch of times and determine that heads comes out we're going to say about two-thirds about of the time which comes out to 66.67 percent of the time and tails comes out one-third of the time which is uh point 33.33 it still adds up to 100 if we add these up two plus one is three over the de denominator of three or 66.67 about 33 plus point three three adds to 100. So that's going to be, oh, hold on. That's going to be our our odds. So what does that look like then? Well, to win, if we if we win, uh, we're going to win a dollar, and but the odds of us winning, we're going to say now are sixty six point six seven percent. So that's going to come out if we multiply that out 0. 0.67. And to lose, we're going to lose a dollar, but that's only going to happen thirty three point three three percent of the time, which comes out to 0. 0.33. And so that means that uh, the expected value is 33 cents, right? Over the long run. So if we played this over and over and over, 0.33 on average per 
uh, per game is what we would expect over the long run, just like we would kind of expect a 50-50 to come out in terms of heads and tails if it was an even coin that we flipped a whole bunch of times. So remember the concept here being that is it an even game? Is it a, a favorable game or is it unfavorable? Doesn't depend on just the payout being one to one. It depends on the combination of the payout and the uh, the likelihoods of uh, winning versus losing, right? And so if we then, we can also say, okay, let's do one more where we had, uh, we had, what if you won $2, $2 and the coin was, was uh, favorable. So now you, you win $2 and the coin was favorable at 66, you would expect 1.33 to multiply those out. If you only lose $1, but that only happens 33% of the time, that would be an expected value of an average of one. So here we have the games could be favorable. That's what we would want when we invest. We don't want to invest in unfavorable uh, games. Even that's what we, what we would actually strive for if we're making a game that we're going to play with friends or something like that, just for the joy of the game and unfavorable. That's what we would expect if we're playing against the house of a casino, because that's how that works. And we would only be doing that to win in the short run or just to hang out in the casino and hope that we can get free stuff that covers our, our losses, at least to some degree, so we can hang out and do whatever you do in a casino. Now let's consider the question that we're looking for at least one heads in two coin flips. So we flip the coin twice, we're looking for one heads in two flips, which means that either we can get a heads in the first flip, or we can get a heads in the second flip, or we can get a heads in both flips. One way to consider this is to say, hey, maybe it would be easier for me to think about the one scenario where we're not going to have a heads out of two flips, that being the scenario where we have two tails, and then look at the complement of that to get the answer that we are looking for to get at least one heads in two flips. So for example, we could say, what's the likelihood that we get two tails? Well, we can say the first flip, because they are independent, is going to be one out of two. The second flip is going to be one out of two. Now, of course, we're, we're, we're trying to get both of them now to be tails. We're not going to be adding them together because we need to come up with a result that is going to be smaller because the likelihood, of course, of getting two tails is, is less. So we're going to multiply them together. So we can say if in fraction form, one times one would be one over two times two would be four. You could say one divided by four would be 0.25 or 25%. 50% times 50% or 0.5 times 0.5 would be 0.25 or 25%. Uh, percent. So then we can say, all right, if that's the likelihood that the one scenario that would foil our plans of getting a heads is 25%, the complement of that then minus 100% means that there's a 75% chance if we flip the coin twice that we're going to get at least one heads either in the first flip, second flip, or in both. Now, if we look at that from the standpoint of a game, you might say, well, that's 75% that if I choose heads, I'm going to win at least once out of the two games. Wouldn't that be bad for a casino uh, type of scenario? And remember that that could be a little deceiving because we have to be considering both the odds as well as the expected payout. So it's likely that if you played the coin flip game twice, that the odds of winning out of two flips is 75%, which is likely. But remember, on each of those individual games, the expected payout uh, is going to be zero. So we would expect then that if it, this game happens to be an even game, that even though we're likely to win once we play it twice, that we're still going to have on average an expected value that is going to be zero over the long term if we keep playing this game, which of course you can kind of see if you consider the potential outcomes of playing the game twice, which would be either the, you get a, a heads on the first one and then you get a tails on the second one, which is you'd win a dollar, you lose a dollar, or you get a tails on the first one, you lose a dollar, you get a heads on the second dollar one, you win a dollar, or you get two heads, which you win two dollars, or you get two tails. Uh, which means you're going to lose $2, which basically comes out to, to the zero, right? <laughs> that we would kind of basically expect basically intuitively. 
All right, so th so then you could do the same thing and say, well, what if we flipped? Uh, what if we had three flips? You had 50% uh, times times one half uh, times one half the odds of us getting a heads after the three flips. If we multiply those together, that now we have two times two times two would be one over eight. So the only scenario out of three flips where we don't get at least one heads would be that we get three tails in a row, which would be one half times one half times one half or 50% times 50% times 50%, which would be 12.5. Uh, the complement of that would be uh, minus 178.5%. So if I play this game three times, we would expect to win at least one out of the three times, 87.5% uh, of the time is the general idea. Now you might say, okay, that makes intuitive sense to me, all right? But uh, it's still a little kind of fuzzy possibly because we're giving, you're telling me what the average outcome would be if I repeated this game multiple times into the future. Uh, with the expected value is gonna go towards zero if I do this multiple times in the future. But so let's test that in Excel. You can test that and we'll just give you the idea of how you might do that. We'll, we, we might work these problems in Excel in another course or section so you can take a look at them and get an idea of what is going on. So let's say within Excel, you can, you can do a random number generation. And so we're not gonna use heads and tails. We're gonna assign heads as a one and tails as a two. And then we can just simply do a random number generation, which looks like this. I want a random number between the bottom number being one, the top number being two, and Excel will simply toggle between ones and twos. And here's a few different flips. This is gonna be the number of flips. And then we flipped three different columns of flips here, and you get a random generation of the ones and twos. And in Excel, we did that 500 times per uh, column here. I didn't show all of them, but that's the idea. So we can do it multiple times quite easily, and then we can consider our outcomes. So now we're gonna say, all right, well, what are the results if we do that? We could count within Excel using our count function, and I'm just using the first 500 numbers here. So out of 500, what are the heads? Meaning I want you to count Excel, count if, look for that range, which is this range right here of those flips and give me the criteria of when you found this U2 is that cell right there, that one. And it returned 227. So 227 times counts were a one, which, uh, and, then, and then here we said, give me uh, a two. How many times did you count a two? And it looked through this whole thing and said, okay, this the number of twos we got were 273. Now we should be able to total those up because this plus this should equal 500 because we said we did this 500 flips. So out of 500 flips, 227 heads, 237, 273 tails. If we look at the calculation of the ratio, that would be then 227 times it was heads out of 500 gives us the 0.45 multiplied times of 100, 45.4. We said that 273 times, 273 out of 500 was 54.6% of the time. And of course, these totals have to add up then to 100. So it's not exactly 50-50, but it's pretty close, right? 500 times. Now we could reshuffle these and this number would be toggling back and forth these two numbers, uh, but it's gonna hover around, you would think 50-50 because that's the odds. What did we expect to happen here? That we expected coin flips of 500 coins, according to our calculations over here, right? What did we expect to happen? We expect the odds to be 50-50 because it's a coin flip. So we would expect them to be 250 heads, 250 tails. In this calculation, we had 227 heads, right? So 220, so we had 250 expected minus 227. That's a difference of 23. Now in Excel, you can recalculate these numbers a bunch of times and this 23, you would expect to toggle sometimes positive, sometimes negative, uh, but to be pretty close to that number because we did fairly significant amount of rolls 
And you would expect, on average, it would go towards the 50-50. All right, now let's, let's consider the payout situation. So we have the even pay situation where, let's imagine we won, in this case, 227% of uh, times, 227 heads came out in our game, and we lost uh, 273. That's the 273 that we counted. That adds up to 500. If we have an even payout, then on the wins, we're going to imagine we won a dollar. And on the losses, we're going to imagine we lost a dollar. And so that means that we got uh, winnings of 227, but we had losses of 273. And that's going to give us then our, our uh, 46 net loss, which is the 273 minus the 227. So we had a bit of a loss here. And we're gonna say then uh, the expected return was zero because this was the even game. So we calculated over here, if we had an even game, uh, duh, 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 that was up top, we had a zero expected value. So that, so that, uh, so we expected then to have a return of zero. The actual return was 46. So we lost $46, we expected to lose zero. If we reshuffle these numbers, which you could do in Excel a bunch of times, again, you would expect this number to go, to go up and down, sometimes positive and sometimes negative, if we have our calculations properly calculated. Let's look at the situation where we had, a, where the, where we had favorable uh, payout. So we're gonna say, okay, we had uh, 227 wins uh, versus uh, 273 losses, that's the same, but let's imagine the situation where we paid out two for one. Okay, so we paid out two for one, then, let's bring this down, the totals, we would have 227 times $2, we're gonna have winnings of 454. And on the losses, we only lose $1, so 273 times one would be 273. And so if we add those up, now we of course are winning uh, the 181, when we consider the favorable payout of the two to, to one situation du, 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 and then du, 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 du. and then what did we expect to happen 0.5 on average in other words over here we calculated our two compared to one and we said that we're going to win on average 50 cents per game so we we're not going to win that in the one game but if we did this over and over which we did 500 times then we would expect that to be the payout so we did so that would be an expected return of, let me calculate this for us just so you can see what's happening here. Expected return was 0.5 times 500. We would expect then 250 that we would get after 500. And in this case, we've got, uh, we got this amount. So the difference between uh, this and the 181 is 69. So. It's not going to be perfect because it's expected value and we ran it 500 times. But if we keep on shuffling this data, you'd expect this to be toggling positive and, and toggling negative and to be fairly accurate over longer, uh, longer games or more iterations of them. Okay, what about that scenario where we, where we had, where we had what are the odds if you had to get to get one heads out of uh, out of uh, two flips so or out of the three flips so now you'll recall over here that we flipped them three times so here's the flips one two three now if i was to to add up the flips and we shuffled these up a bit so that so that they might be a little different than the outcomes over here because they shuffled but the idea is that now we're taking each of these three flips 500 times and then giving us the outcomes over here for the three flips. So we can analyze uh, this, this scenario that we had, that we had, that we're gonna be flipping it uh, three times, which was this one right here. What are the odds that we get at least one heads? We said it was 87.5. So we're gonna say, all right, we flipped them three times. We're gonna be looking at each of these three flips and try to simulate, replicate the odds and see if what actually comes out is what we expected to come out. 
So we have the, the count if formula uh, here that we're gonna be considering. And so the count if formula up top is saying on, on these flips, of these flips, I would like to basically return a value for the heads that we have received. So it's taking these three numbers and telling them, tell them, give me a count every time you see a one. And so, and again, these numbers might be shuffled, so it not, might not work exactly, but that's gonna be uh, the idea. And so, so that's gonna be this one. And then this one, I'm trying to give a count every time this number is greater than zero, because that would represent that we have a heads. So let me try to explain that one more time. We, we have these flips that we are imagining are three flips each time. A one represents a head, a two represents a tail. We're gonna take each of these flips and say count all the times that you have a heads. So if I have over here, then of all of these columns of numbers, we're gonna say that anything that's greater than zero means that we're at least one heads in the three flips that we looked at. So that's great. So anything that's greater than zero. So now what I would like to do is just is pick out all the ones that are not zero because those are the ones where we had at least one heads out of the three flips. So now this count if formula is just saying, look at this cell and, and that's the only range that number and give me, give me a count if it's greater than zero. Now this looks like a pretty simple formula but it can get a little bit confusing because of these greater thans, which you have to have these uh, quotes around and then this and, which ties it to the zero because that greater than is a text field. So this is just the concept here. If you wanna look at it in Excel, we have another course or section just to map that out uh, in Excel. So then if, if we sum those up, I get to the 400 out of the number of flips, which was 500. So what is the percent? So we're gonna say how many of, of all those were heads? We, we had a heads out of three flips 440 times, if I got that right, hopefully, divided by 500, total, total uh, times that we did three flips each time, 500 times. And that comes out to a percentage of 88%. Uh, percent. What did we expect to be happening the expected uh, calculation was the 87.5, which we did over here, you will recall. We said there's gonna be 87.5% of the time that if we roll it, the, if we flip the coin three times, that we're gonna get at least one heads out of uh, the, the three flips. And we repeated the three flips 500 times, and we got to something pretty close. It was 88% versus the 87.5 a difference of 0.0050. And if we kept on shuffling these numbers, again, you would expect this number to kind of go above zero and below zero and so forth uh, because it's an expected uh, calculation situation. Okay, so then let's look at the next scenario where we had a, a coin that's not even. So you will recall in our scenarios over here, we said, all right, uh, what if we have a coin that comes out two thirds uh, of the times heads and only one third tails. So now the coin isn't even. So how can we simulate that like in Excel and experiment with that and say, and say what would be you know the calculations of expected value and so on based on an uneven coin? Well, one way we can do it is I could say, let's make heads uh, either a one or a two. If I was to program this in Excel, put this in Excel, a one or a two now represents heads. Uh, whereas whereas tails is gonna be represented by a three. So that's one way I can use my random number generations. This time, instead of generating ones and twos, I'm gonna say generate ones, twos, and threes randomly. Ones and twos now representing heads, threes representing tails. Therefore, two thirds of the time, we should be getting heads versus the tails. So, so the expected then, we're gonna expect ones and twos to be 67.67% uh, of the time and uh, the tails, the threes to be 33% of the time based on that. So then if we did our random number generation, it would look something like this. We'll, we'll say the number of flips are gonna be 500 again. And we said random numbers, this time bottom number being a one. 
top number being a three. Excel randomly generates numbers then between one, two, and three, and we're gonna assign both the ones and the twos as heads, the threes being tails. So that makes it a little bit more difficult for me to do the formula over here. We could say, all right, now I want you to count, and the formula is gonna look something like this. I have a count if formula. This is one way that we can do it. And we said, I want you to count if this range, picking up all of these numbers, has the criteria that it is a one. That would be all of the one parts of the heads. And plus, count if the same range, all of these numbers, is a two. So I used two count if formulas to pick up all of the ones and the twos that were populated over here. It comes out to 339. And that's gonna be, uh, uh, let's do the next one. The tails, we did a count if formula. For that one, it said count if all of these numbers is a three, right? And it comes out to 616. If I add those two up, I should come up to 500, 339 plus 616. That's my double check because we did that 500 times. If we look at the percentages of the total, then we're gonna be getting then this, uh, 33, 3, 339 over 500 is 67.8 percent and then 161 over 500 is going to be the 0.322 or 32.2 and if we add those up we then get to the 100 uh, percent all right so what do we expect to happen we had the flips of 500 and uh, the odds that we calculated were uh, 66.67. Those are the odds that we calculated over here. 66.67, right? Here we are, right there, boom. And so let's put that over here. We also just saw that over here, two thirds and one third. And so that means that we expected then 333.33 three, 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 three times uh, 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 of the heads. And so what actually happened, we had 339 versus what we would expect to happen at 500 rules at 66 or two thirds of the time coming out heads, 333.33, uh, three, 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 the difference is uh, six. And again, if we reshuffled these numbers a bunch of times, this six would sometimes be positive and sometimes negative, we would expect. Okay, so then let's say, what if we had an even pay situation? So now we've got the outcome was 339 wins versus 161 losses because we won approximately two thirds versus one third of the time. And the payout, if it was an even payout situation, would be we win $1, 339% of the time, that's 339, and then we lost $1, 661% of the time, and therefore we had winnings because we had a favorable coin, even though an even payout of $178 after 500 uh, flips. So then we can say, all right, well, that's interesting. What's the uh, expected return was uh, the 0.33. We calculated that over here. We said, uh, with our expected return calculation that we expected on average to be winning if it was an even payout with this uneven coin, 33% on average per game, per flip, per bet. And so that then is going to give us the expected return of uh, 167, which means that we said out of 500 flips, we expected to win 0.3333 or one third about 0.667. What actually happened is that we we had the actual winnings of the 178. So this minus the 178, and you have a difference of 11. So we're difference by 11 because it was an expected an approximation value over 500 times. And lastly, let's do the same thing, but now we had the payout of two for one. So on the two for one payout, if we had the same uneven coin that won about two thirds of the time and we won $2 every time at one, then we won 339% or 39 times times $2 would give us 678. We lose 
161% of the time, about one third of the time, but only lose $1. So that means that we're coming out 517 is what actually happened on this coin flip uh, scenario versus what we expected to happen. Expected return $1, which we got over here. This is the last one where we said that now we had a two for one payout with this uneven coin means on average, we would win a dollar uh, per game. So now we have the dollar per game. And if we did it 500 times, that would be, we expect to win $500 versus what we actually won 517. So it's pretty close, $17 difference. Again, if we shuffled this a bunch of times, this would sometimes be positive, sometimes negative. So that's the general idea. If you want to, if you want to dig into the formulas of all this in Excel, we have a we have another course or section that goes through these problems in a different in a in a series, so that you can practice your uh, Excel formatting if you choose to do that.